Laura, has anyone ever told you that you were pretty? Well, you are, in a very different way from anyone else. In what respect am I pretty? In all respects. Your eyes, your hair are pretty, your hands are pretty. Somebody needs to build your confidence up and make you proud instead of shy. Somebody ought to, ought to kiss you, Laura. Oh, that was out of line. I've got strings on me, Laura. I've been going steady. I go out all the time with a girl named Betty. You won't call again? No, Laura, I can't. Well, 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 I've made you children some liquid refreshment. You shouldn't have gone to that trouble, Mrs. Wingfield. Oh, trouble? Why, it was loads of fun. I want you to be a very frequent caller. Oh, we're going to have a lot of gay times together. Now, I'll skip back out. I know where my place is when young folks are having a serious conversation. Uh, don't go out, Mrs. Wingfield. The fact of the matter is, I've got to be going. Oh, why, you're joking. Why, it's only the shank of the evening, Mr. O'Connor. Well, I have a couple of time clocks to punch, Mrs. Wingfield. One a morning and another one at night. My, but you are ambitious. You work at night, too? No, ma'am, not work, but Betty. Betty? Betty? Who's Betty? Oh, just a girl. The girl I go out with. We're going to be married the second Sunday in June. Oh, how nice. Tom didn't mention that you were engaged to be married. Well, the cat's not out of the bag at the warehouse yet. I promised Betty I'd pick her up at the Wabash Depot, and some women are pretty upset if you keep them waiting. Yes, I know all about the tyranny of women. Goodbye, Mr. O'Connor. I wish you luck and happiness and success, all three of them, and so does Laura. Don't you, Laura? Yes. Goodbye, Laura. I'm certainly going to treasure that souvenir. And don't you forget the good advice I gave you. So long, Shakespeare. Thanks again, ladies. Good night. Yeah. Things have a way of turning out so badly. Well, 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 our gentleman Carla was engaged to be married. Tom? Yes, Mother? Come in here, man. I want to tell you something awfully funny. <laughs> Has the gentleman caller gotten away already? The gentleman caller has made an early departure. What a wonderful joke you played on us. How do you mean? You didn't mention that he was engaged to be married. Jim? Engaged? Oh, I'll be jiggered. I didn't know that. It seems extremely peculiar that you wouldn't know your best friend was going to be married. The warehouse is where I work. It's not where I know things about people. You don't know things anywhere. You live in a dream. You manufacture illusions. Where are you going? I'm going to the movies. That's right. Go to the movies. Go! Don't think about us, a mother deserted, an unmarried sister who's crippled and has no job. Don't let anything interfere with your selfish pleasure. Just go, go, go to the movies. All right, I will. And the more you shout about my selfishness to me, the quicker I'll go. And I won't go to the movies. Go then. Then go to the moon, you selfish dreamer. I didn't go to the moon. I went much further. I traveled a great deal. I would have stopped, but I was pursued by something. Perhaps I am walking along a street at night in some strange city before I have found companions. I passed the lighted window of a shop where perfume is sold. The window was filled with pieces of colored glass. Then all at once, 
My sister touches my shoulder. I turn around and look into her eyes. Oh, Laura, Laura, I tried to leave you behind me, but I am more faithful than I intended to be. I run into the movies or a bar. I buy a drink. I speak to the nearest stranger. Anything that can blow your candles out. For nowadays, the world is lit by lightning. Blow out your candles, Laura. And so, goodbye.